Facebook. Uh, we have a recording happening from a nice little handheld device here. It'll all be vertical. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing that at least. And uh, you're recording it, are you, as well? Yes, because Carol wants to see it, so I figure I go on Facebook and let her be able to see it. Well, send me the recording when that's done, and we'll, we'll put it to our YouTube page when that's all done, as we, as we get by strictly on, online. Uh, without online, rather, we're going back to an analog worship. And I, I know there's at least more than one amen from the back of the hall. I know that for sure. Uh, so anyway, regardless of whether we have technology or not, I still invite everyone to stand at this time to turn to each other and pass the peace to your neighbor. Say amen. Amen. Remember that God loves you and there ain't nothing you can do about that. And while we're standing, let's pull out our hymnals. Angie, can you come join me? Angie! Angie! We're going to sing hymn number 302. We're just going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. We're going to sing hymn number 302. Everybody got your bulletins open? We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Okay? Ready? Right over here. Everybody with me? Everybody ready? Christ the Lord is risen today. Ah, hallelujah. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Ah, hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumphs. Of being analog, we can come down a pitch real easy. Love's redeeming work is done. Ah, hallelujah. Fought the fight, the battle won. Ah, hallelujah. Death in vain, the victory rise. Ah, Sin has lost its power over us. 
God opens the tombs of our hearts to fill us with life. This is the day, Easter day. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. And now as we go to our Lord in prayer, might I ask, are there any prayers that you would like to offer up? Prayers of concern, prayers of joy. <coughs> You would like to offer up. By the way, before we start that, before you show of hands, in your bulletin you'll find a new insert that we're going to put there on a pretty regular basis. It's included on that on, the, on here is a prayer request. When you have prayer requests that you don't feel like raising up out loud, please write that down, leave that for me to take a look at. Also at the top of that page it says, I would like to hear from the pastor, arrange a visit for a loved one, volunteer, let me say that again. Volunteer or be a liturgist. Uh, any of these things, just tick that off, put your name on the other side of the card. And by the way, if we don't have your name and address and I couldn't find it, can you put on the other side of that your name, your e at least your email your, and your phone number and your name on the other side of that card. And anybody else who is visiting, I warmly welcome you to do the same. We can keep you up to date on what we're doing. We send out texts and emails on a regular basis. That having been said, I've got on the back of this page room to write down prayers that I hear right now. What prayers would you like lifted up? Yes. Just give thanks for the great weather today and especially for the great weather for Friday, our good Friday walk. Wasn't that wonderful? When, when we get back to digital, I'm going to put up some photographs that I was able to take while I took while I was on the walk, uh, and especially uh, Nick carrying the cross uh, down the road. And you got I've got this one picture of Sarah beaming at her son as he's carrying the cross. It's a lovely photograph. And I got to put it on the website as well. So yes, thank you. A prayer of thanks for weather that we're able to uh, raise God's name and praise. It was the sun shining on our faces. Yes. I want to say prayer for my girlfriend. She's got a sty on her left eye. Mm. And your friend's name is? Uh, Donna. Did you say Donna Lou? Donna Lee? No, Donna uh, Smith. Donna Smith. Yeah. Very good. She got a couple days ago. Smith with a sty. Pray that that gets resolved ASAP. Kevin. Um, keep Bobby's prayers and his family. Definitely the whole board of families is in our prayers every day. And, and Bob, as he goes down the difficult road that he's traveling. Yes. And I'd like early my brother. His name is Gary Maslick. Yes. Okay, he's wearing a, uh, a heart monitor, and whatever the yellow thumb is, they don't know if he's going to have to have a face back or not. Mm. Mm. I'll know that hopefully before too very long. We will definitely pray for Gary's heart issues. Lisa. Uh, I ask for prayers for my father in law. Um, he probably shouldn't be living alone. He just totaled his car. Oh, no. So now the family has to figure out what to do with them. I feel for you. I remember the difficulty we had when we had to take away my mother-in-law's keys. It's a difficult transition. So your father-in-law's name is? Jack. Jack. Jet? Jack. 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 Sorry. I keep telling my wife I don't need hearing aids. Uh, in the back, next. Yes. I have joy that I have um, Nisha and my Amen. Basha? Yes, sir. How do you spell that? T-A-S-H-A. T-A-S-H-A. Oh. Simple enough. Simple enough. <laughs> and that beautiful bundle of joy's name is? Fire. How do you spell that? S-Y-A-I-R. 
Saya. Very good. Glad to have you both with us today. Yes. You know, um, while well, I work at one of the residents, her name is Pat. I don't know her last name, but she is losing her leg. She's what? Losing her leg. Oh, no. And one last prayer I would like to offer up, and that is... Um, this is a rare, rare event, happens only about once a century, when all of the Abrahamic faiths have their highest holy season at the same time. In addition to it being Easter this weekend, we're also in the Ramadan for our Muslim friends, and we're also in the midst of Passover for our Jewish cousins. And so I would like us to pray that all three of the Abrahamic faiths, that is, we're all descended from Abraham. We all worship the same God. We use different words, but we say many of the same types of prayers. And I'd like to pray that we all join together at this time of the year to realize how much we have in common rather than fighting over our differences. Amen. 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 So let's pray for unity among all the Abrahamic faiths. That having been said, let's bow our heads in prayer. O oh, almighty and everlasting God, while it was still dark, before thought or sound or hope of daylight, those who love, who watch and wait, rise from sleep, approaching the place where death dwells, never knowing what they see feet falling heavily upon the earth, hearts burdened, minds confused, stumbling in the moment before the dawn, we come to the tomb, only to find that while we sleep, God is at work, rolling away impossible stones, clearing obstacles for us, shaking death out of dry bones, and working with angels. O oh, tellers of good news, Raising up life in the quiet, still moments before the dawn, there it is, an empty grave, which sets feet running, hearts pounding, voices telling things too strange, too unknown, too wonderful for believing. Linen wrappings for all that remain, when death cannot hold in place its work, and life appears, reappears, at the breaking of dawn. Oh, we, we make our way to you, O oh God, this Easter morning, walking, running, wondering, half-believing, certain and sure, emerging out of the darkness of that, oh, we call it good, but it was Friday, the waiting of Saturday, and then, to find all fulfilled on Sunday, yes, in a garden far away in a time long ago, tended by you, the seedbed of our life of faith, where together we too claim we have seen the Lord. O oh Lord, who indeed answers our prayers, today specifically we lift up in prayer the the beauty and joy of, of having a visit from out of state, from Tasha and Seder. We thank you, Lord, for the weather that has graced both our Good Friday remembrances and our Easter Sunday celebrations. We pray prayers of concern, Lord, for Donna Smith, that that sty has been relieved, that Gary's heart situation is resolved with least problem that Jack's mobility is gently adjusted and realigned to fit the current situation. We pray, Lord, for Pat, that, that indeed, does she have to lose that leg? We, we're praying, Lord, that maybe it doesn't. And Lord, we, we pray each day, each week, for Bob Gordon and his family, for the trials and tribulations that he's going through, and by connection, his entire family is going through constantly. 
And Lord, especially worldwide, we'd like to lift up, Lord, the, the prayer of unity, that Lord God, we all pray to you. We who are descendants of Abraham are all one. Let us be one in heart and sharing love for each other rather than hating differences between us. And Lord, there are others, Lord, many, many who are not named out loud, but who are near and dear to our hearts that we keep in our own personal prayers each day. And those are the prayers that you know, Lord, as well as we. And it's those people unnamed out loud that we now pray for in silence. O oh God and community, holy and one, we tell the story of your glory from day to day, even as we pray. The prayer that Jesus taught us to say together when we're gathered together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. And now, today we're not going to share a psalm, but we're going to stay in the New Testament, because this is such a New Testament day, such a good news day. We're now going to read responsively. Oh, we're not going to read responsively. You and I are going to respond. Okay, because I don't have an empty well, well, both of us can respond. Come on over here. I've got, <coughs> I've got an imprint. Okay. So you want to do it all together over here? So everybody can hear us together okay. in one spot? So you will read, Sarah will read the one verse, and then Angie and I will respond with the next verse. This is Acts 10, verses 34 to 43, where it is written. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But, but in every, every nation, nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is, is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That, that message spreads throughout Judea, Judea beginning, beginning in Galilee after, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. Not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen? Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, before we hear the good news of today's passage, which is John 20, verses 1 to 18, and I'll be reading from the NIV translation, but before we hear that, I'd like to set the scene. First, there are many who suggest that no one, and I mean no one, ever loved Jesus more than Mary Magdalene. Because, you see, he had done something for her that no one else could ever do. And she could never forget it. Because, you see, he accepted her as she was. He made her feel worthy. 
that is worthy of God's love. When even she never completely believed that of herself. One historian that I read called Mary a quote-unquote scarlet sinner, whom Jesus reclaimed and forgave and purified. See, Mary had sinned so much, and then she loved Jesus so much. And, and love was all she had to bring which brings us to this morning and the question that the message I'm conveying today asks, why did Mary go to the tomb? That is, before anybody else. Yeah. Well, first off, tradition. It was customary in those days to visit the tomb of a loved one for three days after the body had been laid to rest. Interesting uh, little factoid here back in that era you see, to them, it was believed that for three days, the spirit of the dead person hovered around the tomb. But then it departed because the body was beginning to decay. So, the problem was, Jesus' friends were not allowed to come to the tomb on the Sabbath. Because remember, he was, he was buried on Friday, at the end of the day, the very next day was the Jewish Sabbath, which is Saturday, so nobody could come because that's work. Sabbath, of course. So it was Sunday before dawn, in the gray light pre-dawn, that Mary came to the tomb. So why did Mary go to the tomb at that hour? Well, I believe it's because she just couldn't keep herself away. As soon as she awoke, she made a beeline, okay, I can go. And when she arrived at the tomb, she had to have been amazed, shocked. Because you see, tombs in those days were not commonly just closed by a door in front of the opening, but rather there was a groove cut into the ground in front of it, and then a huge round stone, like a cartwheel, was rolled into place and it would just settle in that place. Matthew tells us that not only did they put that in there, and that would take a few people to, because of the groove in the ground, that would take a few people working together. One person couldn't roll it. But beyond that, Matthew tells us the, to make sure that there was no funny business going on, they sealed that grave shut so that it would take a serious bit of excavating to open that tomb. So that's why Mary was to, had to have been so astonished when she got there and saw that it had been removed. So it's in, in that context, in that light, I'd like us now to hear this good news story. The story that's found in John 20, verses 1 to 18, where it is written. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. And she saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, you know, the, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Now both of them were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over it and he looked inside at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that, that, that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside and he saw and believed. See, they, they still did not understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. 
And the disciples just went back to where they were staying. Now, Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. And they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? And she said, they, They've taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around it, and she saw Jesus standing there. But she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she turned around and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord! And she told them that he said these things to her. Amen. Amen. And know this for absolute certainty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> and now, if Kevin could come and be prepared to distribute the offering plate, Sarah will read the offertory prayer. Most gracious God, you proclaimed your powerful love by raising Jesus from death to eternal life. We are grateful that you forgive our sins and bring peace to all who trust in you. Help us to offer your forgiveness and reconciliation and relationships with people in our lives. May we respond to your tremendous love with glad and generous hearts. We dedicate these gifts and offerings in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen. 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 And while the plate is being distributed, we're going to be singing one time through a very short and sweet hymn, number 177, called He is Lord. And in case you don't remember the tune, you can look it up on page 177, or you can also listen to this. So let's all stand now and sing the doxology that we all know by heart. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all
Please be seated. Let us pray. Because he is risen, a fire burns in my bones, and my eyes see possibilities, and my heart hears hope like a whisper on the wind, and the song that rises in me will not be silent, because he is risen. And as is written in the Psalms of David, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. As some of us were saying earlier at the beginning, God loves you and nothing. nothing you can do about that. For those of you who are visiting, I just want to let you know, I borrow that phrase with license, so to speak. Uh, from a dear friend and colleague of mine. His name is Jeff Nelson, Pastor Jeff Nelson. He's the lead pastor at Royal Oak United Methodist Church. And he used that at annual conference one year, and I said, oh, Jeff, can I borrow that? And he said, it's yours as well as mine. And so ever since, I have treated it as such. But occasionally, I give, I give kudos to the, to the source of a, a good line. Well, I'll tell you, the reason I mention that is because the Easter season colorfully demonstrates how true that is. It also demonstrates another fact that comes right after that, and right, right from the, uh, the Apostle John, in fact, his first letter of John, where he tells us that God is love. And the full message is actually in 1 John 4, and in fact, I might suggest, and next time we have an ad board meeting, I might suggest that we take a look at verses 7 to 10 as a model for revisiting a declaration, a refashioning, if you will, of a faith statement for community United Methodist Church. Here's why I say that. Let's, let's hear that, those verses 7 to 10. I couldn't have said it better myself. It's just what John said. But what he said in words was, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. And, and this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not, not, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. Amen. So yeah, the, the Easter story is the story of how love, infinite, eternal love, became a finite, temporal human being in order to teach other humans how to perfect their own loving. Through his passion and death, love made it unmistakable that the will to love is nothing more or less than the will to sacrifice everything for the sake of those we love. Consider this. There is not one person for whom Christ did not offer his life as a sacrifice. How could you or I ever measure up to that kind of a demand to give our life for those we love but if as Christians, our goal is to perfect our faith, that is the perfection of love. <clears throat> Make no mistake about it. Jesus does call upon us to love, not just our family, not just our church, but to love all our neighbors out there as ourselves. And yes, 
He calls on us to love even our enemies. In other words, love everyone. Let's shift our focus to the second part of that story from today. Someone has called this story the greatest recognition scene ever in literature. And like I said before, this was a quote-unquote scarlet lady, Mary Magdalene, otherwise an outcast in society. And who is this lowly outcast but one who receives the glory, yes, the glory of being the first human being in the whole world to see the risen Christ. The 13th disciple. Can all the women here say amen? Amen. In fact, this whole story is just laced with demonstrations of her love. And come on, Peter and John, they came, they saw, they left, they went home. They couldn't figure out what it was all about, so they threw up their hands and headed back home. So there Mary stood there, alone, crying. Now many theologians, and I won't bother you with all their names, but they have debated the elaborate reasons as to why Mary did not recognize Jesus. And don't trust me, we don't have time this morning to go through all their theories, but I'll just tell you my favorite one. My favorite one is that she could not see him through her tears. I like that. Her whole conversation with the person she took to be the gardener shows her love. What does she say? She says, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you put him and I will get him. I don't think she thought this all the way through. What with her level of strength was she going to do with that weight of a dead body? You heard of dead weight? If she did find him, what would she do with it? Would she carry it? I don't think so. So obviously she hadn't thought it through completely, but it was obvious that her one desire was to be able to weep her love directly over Jesus' body. Now, as soon as she had answered that, had answered the question she thought was the gardener, she must have turned again to the tomb. So that means what? That means she turned her back on Jesus. And then it was his single word when he said, Mary. Hmm. And her single answer, Rabboni, Aramaic for teacher. Now, actually, the Scottish theologian you hear me quote sometimes, William Barclay, he suggests two, actually, very simple, very profound reasons why she did not recognize Jesus. I've already told you the first one, that she couldn't recognize him because of her tears, but I want to go deeper into that. He suggests they blinded her eyes so that she could not see, and compares it to our own personal experience. When we lose a loved one, there's always so much sorrow in our hearts and, and our tears shed or unshed in our eyes. But one thing Barclay suggests is that at such a time, our sorrow is, in a sense, selfish. Yes, it's our loneliness, it's our loss, it's our desolation that we're focusing our attention on. Often, when you think about it, we're not really weeping for the one who has gone because they've gone to be a guest in the house of the Lord. Because honestly, we're weeping for ourselves. And I'm, I'm not coming down on you or me because it, that's natural. It's inevitable. But what this story teaches us is that we must never allow our eyes to be blinded to the glory of heaven by our tears. Of course, there must be tears. But even through those tears, we should glimpse the glory. Now, the second reason he suggests that she couldn't recognize Jesus is because she was facing in the wrong direction. She just couldn't take her eyes off the tomb. So she had her back to him. And we've all been there, haven't we? At times like these, our eyes are fixed on the cold earth of the grave. 
before we have to tear our eyes away from that. Because that's not where our loved ones are. Their worn out bodies may be there, but the real person, the essence, the soul, the center being of that person is in a heavenly place. In the fellowship of Jesus, face to face, in the glory of our maker, God the Creator. So when sorrow comes, we must never let tears blind our eyes to glory. We must never fashion and fasten our eyes upon the grave and forget the heavens, because it's not goodbye. I was raised in Canada's capital. Ottawa is a very bilingual town. And many of my friends, their first language was French. And I loved their parting phrase that we often use. It wasn't bonsoir. Obvious, often they would simply say adieu. It's a very gentle way of saying adieu. You know how that translates exactly? To God. That's what adieu means, to God, which means until we meet again. And that's what we are saying whenever we are at a funeral. I, I just, at uh, South Rockwood, my, the other church I serve, I've had to bid adieu to three members there in my first six months there. And so it's, they've been carrying weights around with them. So we here, of course, have any number of people to whom we've had to bid adieu. That is, until we meet again. There's another phrase we come across that some people stumble over in, in this passage. When the recognition was complete and Mary cries out to Jesus, what does Jesus say to her? Do not hold on to me. For I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Well, that statement appears to have been contradicted, wasn't it, by the next chapter. Come back next week, that's when we're going to be covering it. Uh, in, later in the same chapter, actually. That's when the doubting Thomas, and what does Jesus tell him to do? He says, touch me where they pierced my side. Put your finger on the scars of my hand. Quite the opposite of what he apparently told Mary. Well, bear with me on this. Academics suggest that the Greek wording here, and it was written in Greek, John was, was actually a really bad translation of what Jesus probably said in Aramaic. See, Jesus was able to speak in Greek because he wanted to speak the, the land, of the, the, the law of the land was in Greek, okay? The communication to the world was in Greek, and so he spoke in Greek on regular frequency. But when he was talking one-on-one -on -one with his disciples, his followers, he undoubtedly spoke in his native tongue, the one he was born with, which is Aramaic. So when John was writing his gospel, he translated Jesus' words into Greek. And some carefully studied theologians have suggested that what Jesus really said was, hold me not, but before I ascend to my Father, go to my brethren and say to them. So what Jesus was saying is, don't spend so long worshiping me in the joy of your new discovery. I understand this. Instead, go, go, share the good news with the rest of the disciples. Remember, she was a disciple. The 13th disciple, amen? amen? So a better understanding might be that Jesus was just telling her not to clutch onto him selfishly for herself. Because Jesus wanted her to not waste in time, but instead to share the good news. He had apostle work for her to do. Share the good news right away so that where all the limited time that he had left on this earth could be shared with every one of his disciples. And so that's exactly what Mary did. And if you've done Bible study classes, you've probably heard her at this point referred to as the apostle to the apostles. Amen? Amen. 
And that is exactly what Mary did. And the rest is history. She spread the word right along with the other 12. And within 300 years, did you know there were approximately 34 million Christians around the globe? That represented half the entire population within 300 years, which in the days before Jets, that took some doing, took some traveling. And by the way, in the year 2020, the total has come to 2.4 billion, that's with a B, 2.4 billion people call themselves Christian. Now, I'd love to show you the slides here, because I had slides prepared, but visualize this in your mind as best you can. Far too often, people make the mistake of underestimating what's going to happen ahead of them, especially when it comes to hurricanes. In fact, Hurricane Katrina, 2005, is still, to this day, the most expensive hurricane in the history of America. And far, far too many of them, especially in the New Orleans area, underestimated the impact it was going to have. One of them was Chris Moretz. Well, USA Today ran a story soon after the hurricane telling about how 36-year-old Chris Moretz decided to ride out. You heard that phrase, I'm just going to ride it out. Yeah. Well, when the water reached his hips on the main floor, he went up to the second floor. And then when the water reached his hips on the second floor, he climbed out a window went up onto the roof of it. And when the water started to reach the roof, he jumped off and swam to his neighbor's boat that was still moored there. And he sheltered himself in that boat under an engine cover. Then after the worst of the storm had passed, he went back to his house and the water had receded some. And so what he did is he found some a spray pen and he painted on the roof of his house to call his I'm alive, I'm alive Chris uh, Moretz and a smiley face. Call my brother, and it was like 202-123-8457, put his brother's phone number on the roof of the house. His, name, his brother's name was Gerard. Well, like thousands of others, Gerard couldn't reach friends and family in the Gulf Coast, had been desperate for information. And then someone on the internet saw the sign and called his number. <sighs> what a relief. Gerard said, going 36 hours without knowing whether my brother was alive or dead really puts things in perspective. Indeed, for days and days, the good news kept coming and people kept calling that phone number, letting Gerard know that his brother was alive. There were literally thousands of calls that came in from all over, from all 50 states and Puerto Rico. And in fact, what especially moved Gerard was when a woman from Canada, who had been scouring the web for news of her son, who was living in New Orleans, this woman stopped looking for her son, stopped dead in her tracks, picked up the phone and called Gerard to let him know that his brother was alive. Well, Hurricane Katrina was in some ways a Good Friday kind of day for millions of people. Indeed, when you look around today at all the climate change storms that are happening, the, we're having a record this year for the number of tornadoes, the, Level three to five hurricanes seem to get getting more and more frequent. It, plus, there's how much warfare, what is the Middle East uh, starting to shoot missiles at each other all over again? And speaking of missiles, how many missiles have landed in Ukraine by this date of the year? It seems like the whole world is a Good Friday world. But we, we are the Easter people. We look at the world instead with triumph in our eyes. Through the cross of Christ, we see the world illuminated by the light 
the light shining forth from the empty tomb. So the message that we convey, whether it be by phone, in person, online, or whatever, is very simple. Jesus is alive. Pass it on. Amen. Amen? Amen. And millions more could be converted if we just let them all know Jesus is alive. Pass it on. Amen? Amen? For us, that message is the same today as it ever was. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that sign sometimes uh, that we have on our front lawn. It still has a welcome message from when I arrived last July. Next time we have an ad board meeting, I think I'm going to suggest that we find the letters and include that message on our sign out front. Jesus is alive. Pass it on. Amen. Because that is what we should be saying. That's what you should be saying to your friends, your relatives, to, to those cousins of yours who stopped attending church and have lost the track. Get them back on track. Letting them know that Jesus is alive. Pass it on. Live your faith. Live the triumph of this risen Christ day of celebration. Wrap yourselves in the weightlessness of your forgiveness and the hope of resurrection. Wrap yourself in the grace and love of God. Be the Easter people and say it out loud. Jesus is alive. Pass it on. Say it with me. Jesus is alive. Pass it on. And all God's children and all those who proclaim that Jesus is alive can say all one other thing together. Amen. 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 And now it is time for Holy Communion. And I'm glad we don't have anything to read off the screen, but we have something that I printed real analog and put it in your bulletins. Now you might want to, uh, I really do want everybody to pull that out and read along because this is a modernized version of it and there's a lot of responses in there and every time you see bold lettering, I want to hear right out loud, not a whisper, not a murmur, not a quiet conversation. I want to hear it yelled back at me, amen? Amen. Hallelujah! The risen Christ is with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, guys. Death is conquered. Sin's power is broken. Praise to you, We have seen your glory. And we are yours. And I have to get some water. All that yelling does to old vocal cords. <laughs> we are all yours, blessed triune God. All our lives, all our thanks, all our praise. We give it all to you with all our bodies and minds and voices. Yours, yours all yours. Yours the blessing. Yours the praise from the unimaginable silence before creation beyond the farthest reaches of time and space that our instruments may ever find. From infinity to infinity, everlasting to everlasting, you are God, boundless in love and power. We stand in awe, trembling in the light of your glory. What are we that you should know to us? What are we that you should love us? What are we that you should call us into covenant with you? Covenant we continuously broke, and you continuously sustained. Mercy, how full of mercy. How can we but praise you, joining our voices with the songs of angels and saints, seraphim and martyrs, strangers and family in every generation. Jesus Christ, who comes in our God's name, you are worthy, worthy of God. You died and rose again. You are worthy. Hosanna, now we sing. Hosanna, now we sing. You are 
Holy, O God. Holy. You are worthy, O Christ. Worthy. Worthy in your birth, worthy in your living, worthy in your loving, worthy in your serving. Worthy when you preached good news that God's kingdom was drawn near and gathered disciples then and now to learn and show the world what life in God's reign means. Healing for the sick, new life for the dead, cleansing for the lepers, freedom for the possessed, new birth, new hope, new creation, breaking in for all. Worthy, worthy, worthy above all. Worthy too, the night we betrayed you, when you took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to your disciples. Worthy when you told them, this is my body broken for you, remember me. We remember. Worthy when you took the cup, praise God. And worthy when you said, this is my blood of the new covenant for you. Remember me. We remember. And on this days of days, we proclaim above all, worthy were you when the angels rolled away the stone. And you came forth from the tomb, trampling down death by death. And to all in the graves, Restoring life, we remember, we remember and, we and we praise you with our lives. We remember and we praise you with our lives and these gifts of bread and wine, proclaiming with one voice the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Even so, Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these gifts. Come upon these gifts. Make them be for us Christ's Amen. body, Christ's blood. Make, Make us one body in Christ, enlivened by his blood. One in heart, one in mind, one in you, Holy Spirit, as you move us to pray for the church and the world, that we, with Mary Magdalene, may proclaim the gospel boldly. Hear us, O God. That we may offer your healing for all who are sick or torn or weary. Hear us, us O God. God. That many dead and left for dead may be raised and death's power vanquished. Hear us, O God. That all who are unclean may receive your cleansing grace. Hear us, O God. That all who are possessed, oppressed, distressed, depressed, and downcast may be set free at last. Hear us, O God. Even so, come and fill this feast, Holy Spirit, this day and every day. Until that day when we eat new at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and our Easter rejoicing shall know no end. All, All blessed, honor, glory, and power be yours, holy triune God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us take our elements that we've all received. And by the way, next month we're going to go back to... Uh, using regular bread and regular juice rather than the prepackaged. All time. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's turn that over now to the small part with the bread. Spill it out onto your hand and then hold it up 
so that we know that we are all ready to receive this. Oh, Heavenly Father, we receive this gift with such gratitude. There's grace given to us unearned, the broken body of Jesus who died for our sins, in whose name we pray. Amen. Now let's carefully open this up. I'm going to look forward to not having to peel those off. Let us lift up our wine, our, our unprepared uh, wine, if you will. Lord God, thank you so for pouring out your blood so that we may be cleansed. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. O triune God, you have fed us with the body and blood of Christ, uniting us with you, filling us with the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Send us rejoicing to declare with Mary in hearts and hands and voices, that day has dawned. And we have seen the risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we'll go forward. Angie, if you can come help me again. A song that's very appropriate to close this out with. And that is, Because He Lives. That's on page 364 of your hymnal. Flip to that and see how many of those verses we're going to do. I think we can do all three. Everybody get turned to page 364. I'll see the lights. 
Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. On this morning, we welcome God's news for our lives. Tomorrow morning, we will go with Jesus to serve the world. And on every morning to come, we will join the Spirit in living the gospel to welcome all those who've been abandoned by others, to speak out for those whose voices have been silenced by fears. Let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the living Christ, amen. amen.